What is up, nerd friends? I got a brand new Fusion Pro. We're gonna open it up and take a look. It has been a couple weeks since we've been back on the nerd bench and I've been patiently waiting for my brand new box Fusion Pro. I got a pre-production sample a while back, but I did not get a normal packaged one. So this is just how they come and we're gonna do a real quick unboxing here. And then uh, you slide it open and the angels cry. Ah. Dude, if I can edit in something cool. The typical awesome plasticness. And then uh, before we get to this, the most important part, uh, we've, this, the Fusion Pro has been out for a while. This sticker is very important for your programmer. If you have any LED programming card, it doesn't matter what kind, if it's got the red numbers, the four buttons, and it goes like this. It comes with a sticker that you can slap on there, or if you don't want to, you can stick it on the back, you can throw it in your toolbox, so that you always know what the new settings of your Fusion Pro are. This is very important. Also, comes with a double-ended harness for your programmer itself, a extension to allow you to get a little extra length out of the input harness in case you need that. Sweet zip tie, little mounting tape. There's actually two zip ties in there. Little mounting tape for the on off button and your best friend in the whole wide world, the instruction manual, some sweet hobby wing decals. And I like these boxes a lot, I've mentioned. The motor itself comes in this plastic protective thing. You push on the bottom of it to slide that through and then the wires all come out of the box like that. Easier said than done. Jeez. And there is your Quick Run Fusion Pro 2300 KV FOC brushless system. This is a motor with a speed control built into the end of it. Not uh, a new design completely, but this is an all new Quick Run Fusion, and that's why it's got that Pro designation. There's some new settings, there's a higher KV, the speed control has been upgraded, as well as the BEC. The motor itself, the total package is actually a little bit shorter as well, so it fits a lot more of the vehicles. We've done a quick look video of the system and compared all those hard details before, but just to cover that real briefly. So the motor itself is gonna come in just under 58 millimeters, depending on exactly where you check it from, but 57 and some change. We push the button to give you inches, it's two and a quarter, give or take. Uh, the diameter is gonna be 36 millimeters, maybe 36 and some change, depending on where you hold it or how hard you press on your calipers. And the uh, in the Imperial, it's gonna be 1.4 inches. The shaft is a normal eighth inch shaft and the length is give or take 15 millimeters, maybe 16 millimeters. Push the button a little over half an inch, 0.6. It does have a, a full length harness on it. You can shorten these down like some of the vehicles. This is way too much wire and it's better to you know shorten that down if you can. It has the on off button. It's a single button operation and it has the programming port with the little rubber doohickey in the end of it. Make sure you keep track of that. If the water gets down in here, it's gonna be a real bad time. So you wanna keep that guy sealed up when you're not using it. As we mentioned before, any LED programming card will work with this. I have one for a WP-1080 because all of the WP-1080s came with LED cards. So, you know, lots of people have extras of these. The Fusion Pro does not come with a LED card. This is not included. It just comes with a sticker to go on your own LED card so that you know what the settings are. And in case you ever lose this or you don't have it, the instruction manuals of any of the speed controls have this chart. And on that chart, there are numbers that tell you what all the settings are. The old Fusion had, I think, 10 settings. The new Fusion has 13 settings, so we got some new stuff to talk about. We'll get into that in a little bit here. And another pro tip is in any quick run speed control, if your the numbers on your box don't match what your speed control is showing, just get the instruction manual out. These boxes are very simply just displays for what's in the brains of the speed control itself. So it's just a simple LED display that has a sticker on it to help you out. So the stickers aren't what the settings are necessarily gonna be. So all of these cards are the same, they just have different stickers on them. So that's a quick look at what comes in the box of your Fusion Pro. We're gonna get into doing all the install topics and what all these settings do as well. So here's the instruction manual, something many of us are unfamiliar with. I like to bust them out and read them just cause it's entertaining at times, but we're just gonna breeze through what all these settings do and what the new features of the Fusion Pro are. The big thing that has changed is the running modes. Now you get 
forward and reverse with RPM matching. That's normal FOC style, what we're all used to. That's the default that it starts in. Then you get forward reverse with brake normal mode and forward reverse normal mode. And what normal mode means is it's non-FOC. The throttle matching is turned completely off or at least it gives you an adjustability. It's not turned completely off. We'll get more on that later. But it gives it a more, I guess you'd say, brushed motor style feel. If you don't want it to be super locked and direct one-to-one -one with your throttle input, you like that little bit of uh, delay and coast that brush motors have, uh, that's what those modes allow you to so, do. Many of the rest of the settings are pretty much the same. Uh, lipo cells, you can set it to auto mode. If you run two and three cell, it'll, it'll figure that out when you plug it in. If you run two or three cell all the time, you can set it to that. The voltage cutoff has disabled low, medium, and high, not number values for the, the per cell voltage. And the reason is a lot of times you have a number here and it doesn't match what the battery is and people think that something's wrong. In the end, it really has to do with the batteries, the plugs, the load the battery's under for what the voltage is gonna show when you go to check it, how long it sits can even affect that. So for our, a lot of the speaking shows we do now, our voltage cutoff values are low, medium, and high. Low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage. Voltage. Low is going to be around like 3.3 per cell. Medium is probably close to 3.5, maybe 3.7. And high is usually above 3.7 per cell. Um, but that changes a little bit. You can change the uh, thermal protection from a low setting to a high setting. You can't really turn it off. You can just go lower or higher. I always leave it on the default lower setting. Uh, motor rotation is adjustable. Some vehicles have a backwards transmission. So if you set your vehicle up and you give it throttle and it goes backwards, motor rotation is the setting you're going to change to make that go correctly. Do not change it in your radio. That's always a bad deal. So the BEC voltage is also adjustable, 6 to 7.4, and it has been upgraded to a 6 amp regulator now. So it's a switching BEC, so for all those high-powered multi-servo setups, should be no problem at all. Drag brake force is the strength of your hill or your drag brake, if you will. The hold brake or the neutral brake when you let off the throttle, you can change that higher or lower. There are levels to it, one through eight. There's nine settings altogether, but you can turn it off completely if you want no drag brake, but you still want the instant forward and reverse. Drag brake rate is the next one, value number eight. That is how quickly the speed control applies the drag brake. So think of it out when you pull up to a stop sign and you press on the brakes in your real car, it's how quickly you smash on the brakes. So lower values push the brakes slower, higher values push them higher. I really like to run my drag brake rate turned down to like one or two, because this way, if you're driving around at a medium or a fast speed and you let off the throttle rapidly, the truck kind of coasts to a so, stop. Versus, Depending on the conditions that you're driving in, you can change your drag brake rate to get you what you want. Now, max reverse force and max brake force, these are two very similar ideas. Max reverse force controls how much reverse power you have when your reverse is turned on, obviously. So if you are not real smooth with your reverse inputs, sometimes lowering that will help smooth that out a little bit for you. And then max brake force is the maximum strength of the brakes when you're in the normal mode for the push brake stuff. So if you want to soften up your brakes through the speed control, you can do that here as well. Now, uh, value number 11 is RPM de decrease rate. And this one only applies when you are in option two or option three in your drive mode. RPM decrease rate it controls the amount of I guess you'd say FOC that it turns on or off. That throttle matching feature, it allows you to adjust that up or down. Some folks really like the throttle matching one-to-one. -one. Myself, I'm one of those. I fell in love with FOC from the beginning. But other folks like that more organic feel where the throttle isn't, or the RPM of the motor isn't directly matching what their throttle's doing. They need that little bit of leeway on coasting and stuff like that. So that's what this throttle decrease rate does. The lower the value, the I guess you'd say the less uh FOC it's going to feel. The more locked in you want it, you're going to raise that setting. Up next, item number 12 is the punch, and this is how linear the throttle is. If you run good batteries, good plugs, you can leave the punch turned all the way up, and it's going to give you the most linear feel. If you don't like how responsive that is, you can turn that down so that if you're snappy on the trigger and you need the speed control to tame that down a little bit, the punch being lower will allow that to happen. Neutral range is the final one, lucky number 13, and this is like the dead zone uh, between your throttle and your brake. So if your trigger is worn out, real choppy, or whatever the case may be, that allows you to adjust that. If you're 
Drag brake's inconsistent. As you use your throttle in your reverse, you can increase the neutral range to help compensate for that. So those are the settings. And don't forget, I'm, I've mentioned it, this is the third time now, any of the LED programming cards, these ones here, with the red numbers and the four buttons and they go upright, uh, will work with your Fusion Pro. Not included, but it does come with a sticker that you can slap on there and then you'll have your reference point of all your settings. So there is one extra step with an FOC system and the Fusion Pro is an FOC system. It's called automatic motor pairing. It's detailed, it's step number six in your manual. And I'm gonna show you exactly how that works right now. You may or may not have to do this. The situation comes down to the lifespan of the motor and a lot of the install topics so if you get in any situations where suddenly your motor starts overheating or acting strange or running abnormally all you do is this automatic motor pairing process or what i call the sensor reset should be good to go this is the automatic motor pairing or sensor reset for the fusion pro you turn the speed control on by pressing the button so for the automatic motor pairing you're going to press and hold it till it starts to flash green First it'll turn red, then it'll turn green, then you let go and the motor's gonna beep. Cycles for a moment. Beeps your lipo count as a reset and now you're good to go. It's flashing red because I don't have it plugged into anything except for a battery right now. Thanks for tuning in folks. That has been a quick look and unboxing of the Quick Run Fusion Pro. We're going to get this installed and run through all of that in another episode. Don't forget guys, we do have a podcast that we give away a free Hobby Wing system each and every episode. Look for RC Stuff powered by Hobby Wing on your favorite podcast service and learn how to enter to win. We do do a new episode of The Charlie Show every Tuesday right here on the Hobby Wing official YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any updates and or fun nerd adventures. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will see you all next time.